Now watch me flip the Mr. Shockway. Watch me flip, flip the Mr. Shockway. Welcome back to Mr. Shuck's Flipped ELA. Today we're going to take some time to introduce the short story Ricky Ticky Tavi by Rudyard Kipling. For this flipped lesson you will need your textbook, you will need your journal, and you will need your talking to the text organizer. We're going to begin today with a journal activity. First thing I need you to do is read the Make the Connection section on page 2 in your textbook. Now that you've read through the Make the Connection section on page two, I need you to respond to the following prompt in a one paragraph minimum response. What would you do if you were facing a bully? Be prepared to share your journal response when we get to class tomorrow. We're now going to add some new academic words to our talking to the text organizer. You will need to write a little bit smaller as we have several academic words to add. Don't forget to pause the video so that you can copy down the entire definition. The first academic word is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. A good example of alliteration would be Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. The next academic word that we're going to add is personification. Personification is when we give human qualities to non-human things. A good example of personification would be saying something like, the wind whispered through the trees as the leaves danced on the ground. Wind cannot whisper and leaves cannot dance. These are human-like qualities or characteristics that are applied to non-human things. Try to think of some of your own examples of personification and write them in on your Talking to the Text organizer. Foreshadowing is our next academic word. Foreshadowing is when authors hint at what will happen in the future of the story. Think of foreshadowing as dropping little clues about future events. For example, if you're reading a book or watching a movie where there is a storm that is taking place, oftentimes storms are used to foreshadow bad things to come. Conflict is another new academic word, even though we've been talking about conflict for the last couple of weeks in class. A conflict is a problem for the protagonist in a work of literature. Remember, in order to discuss conflict properly, we are going to talk about it as the protagonist versus the antagonist. There are two main types of conflict. First type is internal conflict. Internal conflict is a struggle between the protagonist and his or her feelings, emotions, or inner thoughts. For example, the character versus whatever feeling, emotion, or thought, such as Gene Fritz versus fear, or Gene Fritz versus anxiety. These would be two good examples of internal conflicts. An external conflict is a struggle between the protagonist and something external, such as another character, nature, or even society. Character versus external antagonist. Gene Fritz versus Ian Forbes would be a good example of a character versus character conflict, or Ernesto Galarza versus language is a good example of another type of external conflict. Setting. The setting is where and when a story takes place. Remember, you will need both parts when defining setting. Where and when a story takes place. Try to be as specific as possible when you are talking about the setting of a story. For example, if we were to say that the setting is Asia in the past, this is not very specific. We can narrow it down by saying Hankow, China in 1925. At this time, I would now like you to read from the Elements of Literature section on page 2 in your textbook.
we can now follow along with the literature and science on page 11 of your textbook. I will read this section as you follow along. Mongooses are very rare in North America, so you've probably never seen one. Mongooses look a bit like weasels or ferrets. They're found in southern Asia and many parts of Africa. They are usually about 16 inches long and have stiff brownish-gray hair. Mongooses are so destructive of other animals that in the United States it's illegal to keep one as a pet. In other countries, such as India, the mongoose is prized for its ability to kill mice, rats, and snakes. The mongoose's fierceness, lightning-quick movements, and sharp eyes enable it to kill even poisonous snakes, such as cobras, without being bitten. Although ferocious in combat, the mongoose can be tamed. A mongoose may become, a loyal, may become loyal enough to its human family to defend it bravely, as Ricky Ticky does in this story. Now follow along on page 16 as we take a closer look at the author of this story, Rudyard Kipling. India, the setting of Ricky Ticky Tabby, is a place Joseph Rudyard Kipling knew well. His father was a professor of art in Bombay, and Kipling was born in that city when India was still under British rule. India was a fascinating place, and young Kipling loved it. When he was six, his parents shipped Kipling and his sister off to a boarding house in England. Throughout his life, he called this place the House of Desolation, feeling very much on his own in England. He made a discovery. Books were among the most important affairs in the world. I could read as much as I chose and ask the meaning of things from anyone I met. I had found out, too, that one could take pen and set down what one thought, and that nobody accused one of showing off by doing so. When he was 17, Kipling returned to India and took a job as an editor with an English-language newspaper. He was fascinated by the lives of British colonials in India and the vivid contrast they made with the Indian people they ruled. Soon, the paper was printing Kipling's poems and tales about the life he saw around him. Other newspapers reprinted them, and readers clamored for more. Kipling's fame grew. Over the next half century, he wrote dozens of books, and in 1907, he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Although he later lived in many places around the world, including Brattleboro, Vermont, India always remained close to his heart. You can read more of Kipling's animal stories in Just So Stories and The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book is about a boy named Mowgli who was raised by wolves. Kim, Kipling's best-known novel, traces the, adventurous, the adventures of an Irish orphan who was raised as an Indian and eventually becomes a British spy. Okay. <laughs>